Before Gamescom 2022 officially kicked off, Zeus flew Media out to a special event to showcase some of the latest products coming out, with the main focus that anyone and everyone was talking about being the new X670 motherboards ready to support the new line of AM5 processors from AMD. Now we've all heard about some of the specs of both the processors and boards that are due out and may have even seen pictures, but pictures with generic information doesn't really give you the info you need in terms of specs, features and the general design of the boards. Luckily, we managed to get hands on with eight upcoming X670 boards, so let's go through them one by one and dissect exactly what each board has to offer. Starting off with the newest board from the Tough Gaming range. In terms of style, it's a pretty standard affair for the Tough series of motherboards, featuring a very industrial design that consists of many sharp angles with lots of grey parts to the design that stand to accent the rest of the board's brushed black heat sinks with some yellow highlights scattered around the board to add some tough gaming flair. In terms of features, we are looking at the new AM5 socket, which has support for the upcoming Ryzen 7000 series of CPUs, and brings along support for DDR5 in the board's four DIMM slots that supports up to a maximum of 128 gig of memory. The board itself features four M.2 slots, one of which is PCI 3.0, two of them are 4.0, and the final one is that all important 5.0 which will bring incredibly fast speeds with it once we see drives that support this generation of storage finally reaching the market. When we look at connectivity, we see there is a whole host of ports on this board with a single USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 port, a total of five USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, seven USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and six USB 2.0 ports. When we talk about networking, this board comes complete with support for Wi-Fi 6E, as well as a 2.5G Realtek LAN port for wired ethernet. VRMs are fairly substantial, featuring a 14 plus 2 design that is rated for 70 amps per stage. Along with the PCIe Gen 5 support on the M.2 slot, we also have Gen 5 support in one of the PCIe 16 slots to allow for future GPUs that support this technology. Moving over to the newest Strix board, we find the same CPU socket, the upcoming AM5 socket, and the same memory specs of up to 128GB of DDR5 memory. Storage is very robust on this board, featuring four M.2 slots and not a single one of them goes down to PCIe Gen 3. One of the slots is a Gen 4 slot and the other three are all Gen 5. Whether or not these share bandwidth with one another or with the PCI Express Gen 5 X16 slot is yet to be seen, but the addition of so many Gen 5 slots is still very exciting to see. The amount of USBs on this board is simply crazy. With two USB 3.2 Gen 2x2s, a massive total of 12 USB 3.2 Gen 2s, two USB 3.2 Gen 1s, and support for six USB 2.0 through the three internal headers. Networking is similarly crazy, featuring Wi-Fi 6E for the fastest wireless connections possible and a single 2.5G LAN port powered by an Intel controller. Last thing to talk about here is the VRMs. This board features an 18 plus 2 power delivery system that are rated for 110 amps per stage and should allow for plenty of headroom when overclocking. The Prime is seemingly trying to cement itself as more of a professional board, even though we see very similar specs to the other boards. We see a design that is geared less towards gamers and more towards creators, but still maintaining some of that gamer style, making this a potential option for a multi-purpose system, or even just a white theme build, as this was the only whiteboard that we saw in the lineup. As well as the new AM5 socket and X670 chipset, we do have support for DDR5 going up to 128 gig across the four DIMM slots. Storage-wise, we see a good collection of M.2 slots featuring a single PCIe 5.0 slot and a single 3.0 slot, as well as two 4.0 slots. The support for PCIe Gen 5 also spreads across to the X16 slots, allowing for future GPUs to take advantage of the higher speed and bandwidth. The board features enough USB for you to easily connect all of your devices, consisting of one USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, five USB 3.2 Gen 2, a healthy seven USB 3.2 Gen 1, and support for six USB 2.0 through the three internal headers. Internet access is very unrestricted as it does feature, again, Wi-Fi 6E and 2.5G LAN on a Realtek controller, allowing you to have all the connectivity that you may need. Finally is power delivery. The board uses a 14 plus two power solution that's rated at 70 amps per stage. The ever popular hero board makes a return once again and it brings a whole host of new features along with it. To little surprise, the hero has enough features to make it a very tempting option for a gamer looking to spec out a system on the new platform. The board supports up to 128 gig of DDR5 memory to take advantage of higher efficiency and higher speed dims that we've seen make a rise in popularity since their launch. Storage options are plentiful with a total of five M.2 slots. There is more than enough capacity for all of the NVMe drives you could ever want. Two of these five slots are PCIe Gen 4, whilst the other three are all Gen 5, making the board more than ready for the next generation of storage technology. 
And of course, the support for PCIe Gen 5 doesn't end there, also spread into the X16 slots, where you will be able to get the most out of those future GPUs. USB is plentiful on this board with two USB 4 ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 ports, a grand total of nine USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and three USB 2.0 internal headers that can support up to another six ports. Internet connectivity leaves nothing to be desired with Wi-Fi 6E for wireless connectivity and a 2.5G LAN port controlled by an Intel controller. The power solution is substantial enough even when doing some overclocking and does allow for some more complicated overclock, shall we say, if you so desired. Features an 18 plus two power solution and is rated at 110 amps per stage. Next up is the ProArt. These boards are designed to be the perfect board for creators with features geared kind of more towards creation instead of gaming. Much like all the other boards we've looked at so far, there is support for DDR5 with a maximum compatibility of 128 gig. And in this type of board, you may actually want to use all of that capacity. Storage options aren't the most complete compared to other boards we've seen with two PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots and two Gen 4 slots, but local storage is likely to be less of a concern for users of this board since the chances of using network storage is actually quite high. The options you get with networking easily allows for network storage and fast connectivity to download and upload content. With Wi-Fi 6E, you get blazing fast wireless connectivity, but for reliability and stability, you're more than likely going to be using a wired connection. And for wired, we have the most options we've seen in any of these boards so far, with a 2.5G port, as well as a 10GBE port powered by a Marvel controller. With this board, you also get a complete suite of all the USBs you could frankly ever need with two USB 4 ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 ports, seven USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 1s, and seven USB 2.0 ports. The board will also support PCI Express Gen 5 GPUs once we eventually see them launch, and this will be good for creators who can take advantage of the greater speed and bandwidth for heavier workloads. For the power solution on this board, Asus went fairly modest when compared to other aspects of this board with a 16 plus two phase solution rated at 70 amps per stage. And this should be more than enough for most people, even if you are doing some light overclocking. An unexpected addition to the showcase was the return of the Gene, which has been out of the lineup for quite a few generations now, not being seen since I think it was Z390 if I remember correctly. And this time around, we're seeing the first AMD Gene board, as all of the previous boards were for the Intel platform. Standing out from the crowd by sporting a micro ATX form factor, this board will allow for smaller form factor builds while still maintaining some of the benefits of using a full size board. The Gene only supports up to a maximum of 64 gig of DDR5 memory as it does only feature two DIMM slots, making it far less tempting as an option for creators, but more for gamers and especially for those hardcore overclockers that we know the Gene board is famous for. Despite its smaller size, we see a decent number of M.2 slots with a total of three, one being PCIe Gen 4 and the other two being Gen 5. The Gen 5 support also goes for the shielded PCIe X16 slot that we have, meaning you will have no issue with them future GPUs. Connectivity is an aspect to the board that sees no compromise, even given the smaller size of the board, featuring dual USB 4 ports, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, 6 USB 3.2 Gen 2, 2 USB 3.2 Gen 1, and 6 USB 2.0 ports. Options for internet access is just as complete as every other board we saw, with Wi-Fi 6E and an Intel Control 2.5G LAN port. The power delivery solution is on the higher end of the spectrum, as we'd expect with a Gene board being kind of geared more towards hardcore overclocking. And that's why we have a 16 plus two phase design rated at 110 amps per stage, which is gonna be more than enough for a board of this size. The Strix X670EI was the sole ITX board on display, allowing for what may end up being some of the most powerful small form factor PCs on the market. Due to the size of this board, of course, you'll be making some compromises, starting with a memory, similar to the Gene, there's only two DIMM slots, but still allows you to have 64 gig of that blistering fast DDR5 memory. But the compromises don't stop there. As you can imagine, fitting so much on such a tiny board is a challenge. So you are only getting two M.2 slots on this board, but one of them is still PCI Express Gen 5, while the other is Gen 4. So even though you're missing out on the number of drives you can install, you don't need to worry about losing out on performance of the drives. USB ports haven't seen the same compromises as the M.2s, where you're still actually getting a large number of ports, both internally and externally. Featuring two USB 4, seven USB 3.2 Gen 2s, two USB 3.2 Gen 1s, and a total of seven USB 2 ports. 
I mean, I've got to admit, this is a lot for a board of that size. It also comes with an external unit that sits on your desk with motherboard controls that's bundled with the board and the ROG FPS2 card, which is an expansion card that allows for more ports to be squeezed into the tiny form factor. Internet connectivity wise is just as complete as other boards, featuring the same Wi-Fi 6E and Intel Control 2.5G port that we've seen on some of the bigger boards. Finishing up our look at these boards is the big one, the Crosshair X670 Extreme. It's an E80X monster of a board that has more than you could need no matter what you're gonna do with it. But of course, due to this extended layout, you should always be careful when specking out a system as case compatibility will likely be an issue. With support for 128 gig of DDR5, you will be getting that blazing fast performance from your memory without sacrificing on capacity. The board also features PCIe Gen 5 in both the X16 slots and the M.2 slots, meaning that the board is more than ready for upcoming GPU and storage technology. As well as the high speeds you can expect from PCIe Gen 5, you can expect some fantastic speeds from your internet connection, with Wi-Fi 6E for the wireless and an Intel 2.5G LAN port, as well as a super fast 10GBE LAN port, again powered by Marvell. Power delivery is suitably bonkers for this board, with a 20 plus 2 phase VRM design, again rated at 110 amps per stage. I mean, that is a lot of power. While X670 was the big buzz, that didn't stop ASUS from showcasing a ton of other goodies, including ASUS clothing, Evangelion-themed clothing and peripherals, monitors for every budget and need, as well as products from every other major lineup, with one of the coolest being the new, oh-so-tiny, 850W SFXL-based PSU. ASUS are really pushing hard on the complete ecosystem, allowing the user to easily build an enthusiast DIY PC and then to customise it with ease. We'll have a lot more Gamescom 2022 coverage soon, so make sure you're subscribed for more.